Good morning again. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. Come on. How are you? Let me just, um, I'm just, uh, hey, hey. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, guys. All right, so I just wanted to make a couple of announcements. This is FYI, FYI, FYI. Okay, so, alrighty. Good morning again. I just wanted to share some information with you, okay? So, I was on a Zoom with uh, uh, Chuck Schumer and Senator Charles Schumer. Everybody knows him as Chuck Schumer, right? Okay. And so, he gave us some information which I want to share with everyone. And some of you might already be aware of this and some of you might not. So you can share the video for those who don't. Okay, so this is in regards to what's going on. So uh, you know that uh, before um, uh, Trump left, he um, allocated, approved for $600 to be released. And some folks have already received the $600 if your parents, or you know, it all depends. Some people have already received their $600. Well, uh, Senator Schumer and the rest of the good folks down there are working on extending uh, the unemployment through March and the funds for $2,000, which you know already. Um, what you might not be aware of, though, is that Pell Grants will be available to uh, the population that's in jail uh, under, under the new uh, presidency and um so that they can get an education and we can reduce the rate of recidivism right so that they won't become repeat offenders they'll have things to do you know have an education and um can become employable in some way or form if not they can have a trade or even have their own businesses we've seen lots of folks turn their lives around. Good morning again, Merlene. How are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome. And so they've turned their lives around and we've seen that. Okay, so we can't write everybody off that have gone to jail. And we know, especially in the black and brown communities, many have gone to jail for things that they weren't, um, that they didn't have to. Um, for those who have committed heinous crimes, well, you know, but uh, as I said, so they'll be having educate Pell Grants so that they can get an education. Now, um, he's working on getting $50,000, uh, you know, per student forgiven, student loan. So he's working on the student loan forgiveness of $50,000 uh, per student. And uh, 10 million signatures will be needed, required in order to have this, you know, come into action. Uh, what will be included in this bill for the student loan forgiveness are parents who have taken out loans for their children and also the age of the student really won't matter. So if you're 65 or 60, he did say that, you know, that can happen. Okay. Um, $25 billion were allocated um, nationally for rental assistance because you know about the moratorium coming to an end, but they're working on that. And so $25 billion were allocated nationally. If you're in New York State, $1.5 billion were um, allocated to New York State for rental assistance. Additional monies were also, is, is also available to pay for utilities bill and elect, your electric bills your, and your utility bills. Um, SNAP also, and monies were allocated so that the hungry can be fed. Um, other monies that were allocated were monies for funeral expenses because um, 
there are, as I don't know if you're aware, in New York, there are like 7,000 bodies that still weren't um, yet buried, but, but God, okay? So, and we know that people were buried in mass graves and all kinds of things, but there are um, funds that are, oh, okay, uh, forgive the noise, they're uh, working in the backyard over there, there's nothing I can do right now. So, I pray that you can hear me clearly, um, or they will stop soon, Jesus, amen. Okay, um, uh, $10 billion was allocated for child care. Okay, so if you're a parent, uh, you know, like I said, get in touch with your agencies. $7 billion was allocated for broadband for low-income family. As a matter of fact, he called out in the video that there was a parent from Brooklyn that reached out to him why this was a part of the package, the way, why $7 billion was allocated. And that parent told him that there are students in Brooklyn that wasn't able to get online so that they, they can learn remotely. So the monies are there. Um, eight, $81 billion were allocated for schools nationwide, nationally. However, $5 billion was allocated to New York State schools, New York schools in New York State and city. Um, $4 billion was allocated to the MTA, right? So they won't cut services. Now, there are monies allocated to churches. So this applies to if you have a not-for-profit, if you have a small business, or if you have a, a church, a small church, even if you don't have your 501c3, um, you can apply. There are monies for PPP. So um, in this round, uh, the not-for-profits benefit as well. Churches are included in this round. He said he made it easier for many churches, small churches and other churches to be able to um, receive uh, the PPPs. Uh, the thing is, if you have less than 300 employee, so he said, even if you're part of a larger establishment, if your church within your parish has less than 3,000 employees, then you can get grants also. And that goes to um, pay salaries of the ministers, pay for part-time employees, part-time workers, pay for musicians, pay utilities, pay the mortgage, pay the rent. Okay, so if you're a small church, if you're listening, if you're a not-for-profit, good morning, Rosie, how you doing? This applies to mommy's business. So she should listen keenly and reach out, reach out to your local elected officials to find out because uh, he said he set aside an extra $15 billion for small businesses and small churches. Uh, you can get this through your CDFI and your MDI, and I'll tell you what CDFI stands for. That is your Community Development Financial Institution. He is going to give out a list, and as soon as I get that list, I will come back and put it in this this particular video's link, okay? So, um, and also the MDIs are the Minority Depository Institutions. Now, they can help you to achieve, to get these uh, grants that are out there. There's also an idle grant. The idle grant is like $10,000 that each institution can get or, or your not-for-profit or your small church, your small church without, um, without the... Uh, 501c3 or even with the 501c3 and the idle grant has um is for whatever use according to what he said now in applying for the ppp um if you have a religious school that can get um grants separately if you have a senior program they get grants separate from the church's grant and if you have a food pantry as well um What's the other thing? Now, all the two requirements are you have to have less than 300 employees and you have to have a revenue loss of 25%.
uh, the coverage, the period of coverage is from the minimum of eight weeks through 24 weeks. Um, and uh, now it will be 44% for non-payroll and 60% applies to payroll. Okay, so 40% to non-payroll and 60% to payroll. So it's much better this time around, guys, for the grants. He doesn't want to see churches going under, he said, because the word of God is necessary to go out to the people. Because he said, if ever... Folks need the word of God is now. He knows that prior is essential. He said how, because he, you know that he's the author of the Brady Law. And so uh, many, you know, the NRA, they have put up his picture and used it as a target and shot, you know, in the center and sent it to him. And he said he knows prayer is keeping him. Listen, he said he knew that prayer helped that there was no, you know, with the insurrection that there was no cue. Uh, uh, coup, sorry, the uh, last Wednesday. Um, and this was done, uh, was it Friday? The Friday, Friday after uh, that insurrection on the Capitol. Um, so these are some of the the things, uh, information that I have for you that I got um, that the Senator Schumer has said. Uh, the other thing is, uh, if you are an a Haitian immigrant, if you are from El Salvador, Liberia, in other words, if you came here because of a crisis in your country, whether it was the earthquake or the hurricanes, or um, you've been displaced from your country, or you know that uh, there is upheaval in your country, then he's working on having uh, the immigrants that are here to get a citizenship. And so, uh, you know, there's TPS for you guys. Um, also, there is uh, e an extra $180,000 for each church, uh, you know, to protect the minister. It's a protection for protection of your church. So that money, that 180000 can go towards helping to pay for security guards, it's security, period. So it can pay for security guards. It can pay for uh, secure doors. It can pay for a security system. Or it can pay for fencing around your church. Because we know that churches need to be secure. And, uh, you know, from we see the times that we're living in. Um, in, uh, in Brooklyn, recently, uh, a, jan a janitor... Uh, was cleaning the church, a custodian, sorry, was cleaning the church and um, he was killed, you know, because someone broke in and don't know the full story, but, uh, you know, and we heard about the pastor in, um, in uh, Texas, the people that were killed because a fugitive was uh, hiding from the law. And uh, so, we know things happen and plus we've heard of the other assaults in churches and synagogues, you know, houses of worship. So we thank God that they're recognizing that the word of God is necessary. And so whether you're a small church, a medium sized church or a large church with less than 300 in um, employed, then you can apply. Uh, also, uh, mental health. We see, we've heard that COVID has affected many who have had it, uh, came down with, you know, issues, you know, mental issues. Um, and so now it, uh, in the new laws, it's uh, Medicaid uh, can, can um, will cover um, the bill also to take care of, you know, having mental wellness. We do need everyone to be mentally well. And so if you're having anxiety issues, if you're unable to sleep because you're depressed or you're sleeping too much because you're depressed, just not being functional, not being optimally yourself. It doesn't have to be a, a severe mental problem, but um, 
It can be because of the COVID. COVID. It can be um, because the effect of the COVID or the effect of the COVID. So whether it's you, uh, you, you became symptomatic after having COVID or because of COVID, you've become fearful, you know, and uh, I've gone into a depression. Uh, there is help. You can get help. There is um, uh, $4 billion allocated nationally to mental health wellness. And $500 million was allocated to New York State. So if you live in New York, great news. Either way, wherever you are. And that's a good thing. So I just wanted everyone to know that. And one additional piece of information uh if you are a not for profit or if you are a community based organization or if you are a small church clergy and uh you can apply discretionary funding is now here uh, there's more than 374 million dollars allocated here for not-for-profit, for parks, for schools throughout the borough. Um, you can apply online. Uh, it started uh, on January 4th, however, through February 25th. Your local elected officials, you can go to the bar president's office. Well, you know, call the offices because of COVID, no one's going in. But call the offices. You can call your bar president's office. You can call your elected, local elected official's office. And it doesn't matter what state you're in, okay? Because all states, right? Okay. Uh, New York City cap grants, uh, there is also that. So there are ways, sons and daughters of God, for your business not to go under for you to be blessed, for you to be helped. Assistance is there. Reach out, reach out. Get in touch with your local elected officials office. Get in touch with your community board office. Get in touch with your bar president's office. Get in touch with your local elected leaders. They, do you know we have district leaders? Uh, there are so many offices available to gain information from and that they can guide you, you know, into achieving what's there. The monies have been allocated. They're there. We keep saying there's no monies, there's no monies. Our children are not getting, they don't have enough devices. They can't get the services, but they're there. You just have to know to reach out to do not suffer alone. Do not stay silent reach out, speak to someone, ask someone. So I'm trying to do my part to help each and every one of us. So I have disseminated this information that I've heard, and now you can go ahead and share it with others. And as I said, I will go back and put uh, what needs to be put in the uh, description box, and I will come back as soon as I get the links that are necessary, they will be added, okay? I just wanted you to be aware because, as I said, as of Monday the 11th, the process started uh, January 4th, um, discretionary funds. So don't wait. Run out. Call up your local elected official and get the monies that you need so that you can provide the services that are necessary. Some people are providing mental wellness services. Some people are providing food services, which we know is essential. These things are essential. And, and for the houses of worship, no matter if you're small, your ministry is small or it's large, from the mere fact that you are, you are helping others when you're praying and reaching out. And um, if you have a building, you're allowing other services to be utilized within your building. So, you know, we give God the praise, glory, and honor, and we thank God for those that he's strategically putting in place. And um, let's make use of what's there for us, okay? Especially in our black and our brown communities, because we know that uh, for the longest while, those many of our communities have, you know, have struggled 
So let's not struggle anymore. God doesn't want us to struggle. And so, hey, he sent help through humans because all the blessings are what? They are yea and amen. They're in us, through us, and for us.